Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video. Today I'm talking about the data science resume. Now, more specifically, I'm gonna give you eight mistakes that you should not make when you're putting this together. To be clear, the data science resume will not get you a job. There are plenty of more important parts in the interview process. On the other hand, the data science resume can win you an interview, and it can also help you avoid being rejected before a company even gets to meet you. Usually resumes are used as a screening criteria. If employers don't see specific things that they're looking for on a resume, they'll put this resume in the rejection pile. I put this video together to help you avoid some of the pitfalls when making this resume so that you have a higher chance of getting your resume put in the pile for continuing interview prospects. If you enjoy this video and find it useful, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more content at the intersection of data science and sports analytics, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so that you can be alerted when I post my next weekly video. So the first mistake that you should avoid is forgetting to put your GitHub, your Kaggle profile, and your LinkedIn on your resume. In 2020 going forward, your resume is so much bigger than just a single piece of paper. It is effectively your entire online presence. You should keep these different platforms all updated, organized, and well manicured because in my opinion, these give employers the most information about the quality of work that you can produce. The best indicator of how you will perform on the job is how you've performed in past projects. Now they're able to see this through your GitHub and your Kaggle. So you should really pay attention to these. If you have great projects and really well-documented code there, these companies will be significantly more likely to move you on in the interview process. The second mistake you should avoid in building your data science resume is being too generic. Now, I've seen a lot of people, they just use shotgun tactics to send out a bunch of resumes with the same thing. This can work, but if you're really careful about your selection and you know you want a job that is right for you, you should be really being careful about where you apply and how you cater your resume to that position. It's very similar to using keywords. You basically look through the job description, you look at what is important for that role, and you make sure that you mention those things in your resume. For example, if they want you to be able to do visualization in Python, make sure that you highlight some of your experience where you've actually done that in your resume. One way to make sure that you're catering your experience for each individual job is to have one large master resume document, so maybe three or four pages, and for each of your jobs you have you know, five to ten different things that you did. For each company that you're applying to, you actually take only a few of those bullets, the ones that are most relevant to that position, and use those and trim it down to basically one page. The third resume pitfall I see is that you're focusing too much on algorithms and not enough on outcomes. It's important to be able to do different, you know, regression, classification, and clustering algorithms, but what is more important to a business is the actual outcome, the, the, the result of your work. You know, when you're a data scientist, you're actually trying to save companies money or make their processes more efficient, and that should be the focus of the story that you're trying to tell. It's great if you use a very complex type of neural net, whatever it may be, but it won't matter at all if the outcome is not very good. No one cares about what complex algorithm you used if the algorithm did not produce results. A fourth mistake that I see is that the descriptions of your past work experience are too vague. As a data scientist, you really have to be focused on specificity and evaluating your performance through metrics. So rather than saying, for example, that you improved your, your company's website traffic, you could say that you improved it by 6% over three months. That is a lot better story and that's very concrete. Those are the types of insights that people are looking from from data scientists. Measurement is an integral part of data science and you should be very clear about using measurement terminology in your resume. The fifth thing I see a lot of data science hopefuls doing is telling rather than showing. So they'll say, okay, I'm a great Python programmer and they won't necessarily substantiate that. I see this a lot in cover letters as well. You should be showing how you can actually use these skills rather than just saying it. So that means that in your project experience, you have a very complex uh, Python implementation that, that you are describing. Or you, a lot of your projects are focused on using you know, deep learning. That shows to me that you have a good understanding of deep learning rather than you just telling me. The sixth mistake that I see is that 
candidates don't necessarily show their personality in these resumes. Now, I think that that's a problem because if you're trying to differentiate yourself from everyone else, there has to be something that sets you apart. Now, this is a great way to set yourself apart, especially if you're doing projects where your projects are very unique. They have a, a kind of a background on your interests as well. To show your personality a little bit, you can also have an interest section on your resume. You can talk about the extracurriculars you did in school or the volunteer work that you do. These things really show a little bit more about your character and your personality. And remember, these people are going to be working with you. You know, they don't necessarily just want to work with a robot. They want to know that you have some context to you. The seventh mistake that I hate to see are, are basic grammar mistakes. If you spell words wrong, if you use improper terminology, that's something that really bothers a lot of people reviewing these resumes. You know, as a data scientist, you really have to pay attention to detail and a simple spelling error on a document that you're presenting to someone who you'd like a job from is, is really a bad look. Now, this is particularly important for people who are not uh, first, you know, their first language is not English. And I really recommend just getting other people to review your resume with you. They don't have to be a resume expert. They just have to have a second set of eyes so that you know that you're not making any of these very simple grammatic, grammatical errors. The final mistake that I see is that you just don't have any good projects on your resume. I think projects show that you have a couple different things, that you're interested in the field genuinely, that you're creative, you're, you're able to, to brainstorm ideas and solve problems. They also show your personality a little bit, what your interests are, like I mentioned before. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse a little bit, but I really do believe that projects are the biggest, easiest door into data science opportunities. If you really, really focus on these, they're great for storytelling, they're great for uh, a lot of the other steps of the interview process as well, because that's largely what you're going to talk about. If you avoid these mistakes, I think that you really will give yourself the best opportunity to get at least to the first round of the interview. A lot of the things on your resume are what you're going to be talking about in the next steps of the interview process. So make sure you understand them very well and that you have something uh, around each of the points that you make to talk about at length. If you're interested in learning more about the actual interview process, I have a video linked above where I talk about each step of the process and what you should know about it. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.